So La Classics actually started making face masks. And uh, it, it's kind of a cool story, I think, because several weeks ago, I got an email from uh, one of my customers and uh, he mentioned uh, that there's a, a group of doctors in uh, Montana at a uh, hospital in Billings who saw the need of face masks and then decided to uh, uh, basically design a mask and start 3D printing them. A local company who makes snowboard bindings, Spark R&D, saw that they're printing these masks and uh, said, hey guys, uh, we have an in-house injection molding capability. If we convert this uh, design into injection molding, we can uh, produce 10 times as many masks as you can do it with 3D printing. Meanwhile, one of my customers heard about them because he knows that owner of that company, Spark R&D, and told me about the story and, and said, hey, you know, you want to work with these guys and see if you can kind of spread the, the masks in, the, in, in your area or state of Washington, because there's also a need out there. And I said, sure, that sounds like a great idea. Thank you very much. Um, talk to uh, Rob and, and Nathan and Paul and the, and the team here, what they would think about it. And if we could even pull this off, you know, I mean, making a mold in a week, I mean, that's, that's, you don't do that every day. My name is Nathan. I work at Select Plastics. I'm in my fourth year at the Ajax program doing tool and die. We got this exciting project from Montana Mask that we needed to make a mold in one week, which is pushing our tooling capacities to its max. My biggest challenge in this process was playing a game of tag between me and the engineer and trying to get both of the machines running at the same time. So while I was working on getting stuff set up, he was working on tool pathing. So this is the mask that we ended up making and it's, instead of 3D printing, we did injection molding. And we ended up having to adjust quite a few of the running parts, the gates, to try to get some of that burn out of there. It was really kind of a fun project considering that it was, it was a weak deadline. We wanted to get something out to the community that could help them, especially for the first, you know, first responders. We are only producing masks today because of the apprenticeship program and because of AJAC. What really got me to this point was having Rob as my mentor and really, really writing me and showing me how to work on a mill, work on a lathe, and getting the CNC's running at full capacity and having good mentors at AJAC. We were able to, to bring back mold making to select plastics and, and, and basically to the US. And this whole, like I said, this whole mask success is, is, is totally on the shoulders, on the apprenticeship program, and, and on Nathan, as far as I'm concerned. We we're able to push tool room limits and then give back to the community. The community gives us so much year round that it's really a kind of a fun project to be able to give back to the first line responders, and it's just all around, it's a great community. Like, it's great to give back.